the, um, if you guys can see the spreadsheet, looks like it's sharing on my side, but I just want to make sure. So before we jump into this, this is um, totally different. Um, if you purchased the one before, it just, a lot of that stuff's just going to have to go out the window. Um, I started building this and it just kept um, growing like exponentially to a lot of things that um, I never thought I was going to include in here. So anyway, I don't want to like bore you with all of it and make this take forever because this is pretty big and there's a lot to go over. So let's do kind of a general overview first. And then um, we'll get into the details of like how it works, and, like instructions of what you do and how you make it function. Okay. So um, let's see here. First, you've got a navigation menu on the side. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And you can see you've got this whole menu. Um, so instead of dealing with like the tabs at the bottom and having to scroll over and all that stuff, you've got a, a navigation menu here. So you've got a dashboard, you've got gift cards packages. So those are your trackers for gift cards and packages. You've got a profit and loss statement, um, as well as a clients tab where you can um, update all their information, add new clients and manage them. Again, we're going to go through each one individually. And then you've got an update info tab. And this is where we're going to start in just a couple minutes, kind of inputting some information for you. Um, and then up here, you're going to see you've got monthly sheets. Oops. And this is going to give you a drop down. And then you can just pick the month. And then when you click it, it's going to open up that month's tab. So you don't have to worry about navigating along the bottom. Okay, um, so let's get into kind of how this works and, and what all of the, the pieces are. First, let me tell you when you download this um, in Excel specifically, it is going um, to prompt you to ask if you want to enable macros. It's going to be the first thing that pops up when you try to open the file is your computer is going to say, hey, do you want to enable macros? You better click enable. Yes, yes, you want to enable those because if not, half the sheet's not going to work the way you need it to. Um, so, and by the way, if you have questions, if you have anything, put them in the chat. I can see that uh, at least partially right now. Um, so hopefully that will work well. Weird things happening on the phone and computer. And, oh my goodness. There we go, okay. Yay, Gretchen, I'm so excited, you're excited. Uh, perfect, so let's get into what you're gonna do first. Very first thing, you were going to um, jump over here to update info. And this is where you're going to start. This is where you're going to put in all of the information that's going to kind of feed into the rest of the spreadsheet. So this is where you start. You put all of this in, and then you don't have to mess with it again. Um, and it, it should all operate fine, unless something changes. And we'll go over that in just a second. So let's zoom in here at what each one of these things are, because there's like some, some random things, but they're kind of important. So first, what payment types do you accept? So we say cash, check, card. Venmo, insurance, whatever types of payments you accept. If you want to track who pays what, um, this is the way you want to do it. This will also help if there is an associated fee. So let's say you have a card fee of 2.5%. You put that in there, that way it calculates how much um, in card fees you actually need to set aside for your expenses. And you can input that once a month for your expenses for that month. Because um, card fees are something that a lot of people just like forget to put in there. Um, and yet it, it can add up pretty quickly. And then down here, you're going to see you have gift cards expire in blank months after purchase. I'm going to put 24 because I'm in Tennessee and that's our requirement is two years. And then the same thing for packages. If you sell gift cards and packages, you're, you're going to want to put um, an expiration basically in here. How many months is that package or that gift card good for? So I'm going to say 12 months for packages and 24 months for gift cards. Okay, um, now distribution of revenue, and this is totally new. Um, if your card fees are variable, now that should be pretty standard, but if there is something you want to um, put in here and, and do like a couple different types, like if it's Discover is this rate and Visa is this rate, you can list those out here. Um, but these are your, your options and you can still put that associated fee in. 
hope that makes sense. Um, okay, so for this distribution of revenue, this is something that I wanted to put in here because a lot of people don't know how to split up their money. Um, and this isn't quite profit first, but it's similar in the method of if you bring in a thousand dollars, how are we going to split that up among your business profit? Because your business needs to make a profit. Owner's compensation, that would be your income, taxes, operating expenses, savings. Okay. So this is the kind of thing that you need to have in place so that you know how much you need to put into specific accounts if you have these separate accounts. Or at least, at the very least, you know how much needs to go to operating expenses, how much you're actually getting paid. Um, we would like to have taxes set aside. So that's typically 30%. That's why I have these numbers in here. This is kind of a ballpark basic standard sort of thing. Um, but that's going to vary. So feel free to change these percentages by all means. But this is going to help you actually visualize how much. So when we get into each month um, and then even your annual overview, you can see how much you actually made as owner's compensation, how much went to taxes, how much you set aside for operating expenses, how much you set aside for business profit, how much you set aside for savings, um, that sort of stuff. So this should give you that kind of breakdown so you have that at the ready and can view it. Okay, um, next are your expense categories. I have these in here. These are kind of like some of the most common, your bank fees, charitable contributions, client gifts. I'm not gonna read them all for you. Um, but your basic categories for expenses and what this is going to do is allow this to number one you can categorize all your expenses as they as you log them um and then that way at the end of the quarter at the end of the year whenever you decide to do your taxes you can look at your profit and loss statement and it has them all categorized so that when you go to do your taxes it's the tax forms how much did you spend in charitable contributions six hundred dollars how much did you spend on legal expenses $300. How much did you spend in professional fees? $800, like whatever. It's right there. It's all summed up for you. So you don't have to do all the math. <laughs> um, so um, there's a couple extra here too, that in case you've got some other things that apply, you can put those in here as well. Um, and of course, change any of these that you want. These categories get fed in through the rest of the spreadsheet and will change as you change them here. Then your marketing avenues. And again, there's a bunch of I just put in a few here for samples, um, but you've got some other things that you might want to add in there, however you market. Um, so you can see there's there's a limited amount, but you've still got a, a good bit here so that you can keep track of uh, where people are coming from. So when you go to input a client, you can specifically mark how they heard about you. Did they hear about you through an event? And then you can mark the details of that, which event. Um, did they hear about you through word of mouth? Then you can mark who referred them that sort of stuff. Um, but it lets you see, I get most of my clients from word of mouth, or I get most of my clients from Facebook, or I get most of my clients from Instagram, whatever. It allows you to take a look at that. Um, now, I also put a, um, a client status here. And this is something you don't have to use by any means. You don't have to use any of this. But um, the client status, I think, is important if you want to red flag people. Um, if you have like a VIP program and you want to mark those people as separate so that maybe you can go and grab their email addresses or you can grab their addresses or phone numbers and send out a mass email to all of them, that sort of thing. Um, or you just want to have a whole list of red flag people. There's a section in the clients that will pop up all your red flag people, um, that sort of stuff. So we want to put a status on there. Um, and then let's see your expense accounts. So when you go to put in your expenses, where are you paying out of? So if you have separate expenses, or excuse me, expense accounts, like for your taxes, for your general checking, operating expense accounts, whatever, savings account, anything like that, mark them here so that when you go to pay anything, pay any expenses, you can mark it as which account it's coming out of. And this can help you just kind of like, you know, balance your own books um, later, balance your own accounts. Okay, next, you have your initial follow-up, a check-in, and a re-engagement. So this is going to say their days since last visit. How many days since their last visit do you want to have an initial follow-up? So that could be a text, an email, a call, whatever. Hey, how are you feeling? Don't forget to do a stretch as we talked about, that sort of stuff. You check in if they've not made an appointment in a week. So, you know, you want to kind of re-engage, make sure, um, see if they want to book again, all of that good fun stuff. And then re-engagement that I'm trying to get you back in. I'm trying to at least kind of make sure that we're, we're touching base so I'm not completely losing contact, 
that sort of stuff. So you set how many days you want. It may be five days, it may be two days, whatever you want. I did two, seven, 30, just for ease of this. And what this is gonna do in the clients list is it's going to pop up the people that you need to engage with, the people that you need to follow up with, the people that you need to check in with based on their last appointment um, that they were in. So that's everything on top. Now we come down here and this should be relatively straightforward for y'all. Um, I've got some samples in here for you. This is just your services, your add-ons, products, that sort of stuff. So we're gonna go through each one real quick. Um, you've got room for 35 in each one of these categories. I had a lot of people who had a lot more services than they could fit in the last one. Um, and they had add-ons and stuff. So there just wasn't enough room. So I tried to make this with enough room and categorize each thing so that you can see it. And plus this is going to play into some other metrics we'll get into in a little bit. Um, so you have your primary services. So this could be, you know, all your massage services, basically you put in your fee, you put in how many service hours they are. Um, so for this, doing this in because it's pretty far out. Um, so for 30 minute relaxation, it's $50 and it's a 0.5 service hours. And the reason we do this is so that you can track how many service hours you're actually doing. Um, now, when we come over to add-ons, we do the same kind of thing, service name, a fee and service hour. There might be some add-ons and such that have a zero service hours because they don't add any hands-on time to the service. Now, if you want to track the hands-on and hands-off, that's perfectly fine. And you can put in that amount of hours instead. Does that make sense to everybody? So if you have um, something like Hotstone that doesn't add any hands-on time, but yeah, it's gonna take you an extra 15, 20 minutes to wash the stones and do all the setup and all of that stuff, then you might want to factor that in. I never personally do that, but that may be you know, something you want to, to do. Um, so you have that option. And then just like in all of these, you're gonna have a tax rate. If you have to tax these services or these add-ons, you wanna put your tax rate there. So we'll come over to products and it's the same thing, your product, your fee, and then your tax rate. So my tax rate, uh, we don't have to tax services um, in Tennessee, but we have to tax um, products. So our tax rate is 9.75%. So that's what I put there. And that way it will calculate the sales tax you should be collecting whenever you give it to your sales tab. Same thing for your gift cards. You can just label them however you want. You can put a description in if there's more to it, like if it's a, a package of services kind of thing. Um, the fee associated with it and the tax rate again. And then your packages. So this could be um, five by 60. So let's say I've got, um, they're basically buying a five pack of 60 minute relaxation massages. And let's say that that's, I don't even remember what I was charging for those. We're gonna say 500 just because I don't remember what price I put under those. Um, and no tax rate. And we'll say this is five service count because it's five services. And what that's gonna do is when we go to do your services, it's gonna treat, keep track of how many they have left. Um, so how many they have actually um, bought, and then you can go in and alter that for how many they've used. All right. Um, and then your rent, you can go in and put, you know, if you rent out rooms or rent out space or whatever, you can do this here. So you can mark your renter. If there's any details you want to put in, like the specific room or the specific person or whatever other details you may want, um, the fee associated that they're paying for rent. And of course, if you have to charge tax on it. And classes as well, whether this is workshops for the public or CE classes. I know there's a lot of therapists who also teach. So I wanted to give you an option for classes as well. So there's class name, your fee and your tax rate. Okay. Once you have all these in, you don't have to mess with them again. Okay. They're all, they're all just going to auto populate into all these other spots in the spreadsheet. Um, the let, let me make a note here really quick though. If you increase your prices, let's say you do a price increase halfway through the year, do not, do not come in here and just change the fee right here because it will recalculate everything that you've marked under that specific service before. So instead come down here and say new 30 minute relaxation and put your new price, okay? whatever it is, however you're going to structure that, 
leave yourself room if you're going to do a, a price increase at some point to leave it there. Or you even mark it as an add-on, okay? Instead of, let's say you don't have add-ons, you could use this whole table if you want for new pricing um, and just say, this, these are your new prices, okay? So you can compare how many of your new services or excuse me, newly priced services compared to your old price services, okay? Um, let me know if I'm losing anybody because I've stared at this thing for like months. And so it's just kind of old hat for me. Um, but if there's something you're seeing that is like, whoa, that doesn't make sense or I'm not quite sure I understand, please let me know. Um, because for me, this is all just normal because um, I've stared at it for months and months on end. Okay, so that is all the information you need to put in there. Once all this is done, you are set um, and you can start using this as is. You'll see here, the day is always updated. Um, this is dynamic, it will stay for whatever today is that'll automatically update. So let's go, let's start with clients. How you're gonna input clients here. Um, so if we come up, what, okay, let me back up. When you have a new client, you're gonna come in here and you're gonna input their information in this little form up top. You don't touch any of these other things, any of this stuff. Don't mess with it, it doesn't matter, okay? Um, well, it doesn't matter, but it's not something for you to input in. There's some very big formulas in these sections that I don't want you messing with, okay? So don't mess with those. You're only putting information in here, all right? So let's say we have, we put in our client, and we'll zoom in so we can actually see a little bit. And we will say, she was word of mouth. She was heard by John Smith. Sure, we'll keep it simple. Um, and, Using my phone number and put in an email address. And then again, you can mark the status here. So is this person a VIP, VIP client? Are they a good client? Is there a concern? Are they kind of, eh? is there a red flag? Are they terminated? Um, so we'll say this is a good client and put goals and put any notes that I want, you know, uh, um, surgery in 2020. Um, whatever, I'm not going to get super detailed here just to waste your time. Um, then you hit submit and it will automatically come down here to this table. Now what you're going to see in all of this is see this first part automatically copies down and you're going to see number of visits. So when you start entering in sales, if you pick this name, it will automatically count how many times she's come in how many sales you've had from that client. Um, it will show how much they've spent in total, what their average spend per visit was, when their first session was, when their last session was. And then you have a space here where you can put any feedback, maybe quotes and testimonials from them so that you can kind of, you know, keep track of those things and then be able to share them in your marketing and such. Does this make sense? So what you'll see here, I'm going to clear, oh no, I'll leave that for now. Um, you will see this needs initial follow-up. So once I have session dates and such in there, these will start to fill in and it will show you who needs initial follow-up based on the days that we marked um, in that enter info here tab. Um, so if they were, if they're two days out from their session, from their last visit, um, they'll pop up in this tab and it'll have their name, their address, their phone, their email, and days since last visit. Same thing for the needs check-in, same thing for the needs re-engagement. Um, all right, then you're gonna see here, once again, we have visits and stuff in, who has the most visits out of all these clients that you're gonna end up on this list, what their highest average spend, um, or who has the highest average spend, who has spent the most with you, and what's your top acquisition method. All right, um, now let's go over here and, oh, this, I'm using the 
I fixed this earlier. I'm using the wrong copy version. Ignore that. I already fixed it. The birthdays will pop up here. Okay. <laughs> um, I found this bug earlier and I fixed it, but apparently I copied the wrong file. Yours is good. Don't worry. Um, anyway, it will have their name, their birthday, their address, phone number, and email. It won't do all of this. Um, it will. It will work properly. But this will show upcoming birthday so you can keep track of that and then you have red flag clients so if i was to mark her as a red flag instead that is going and change that she's now going to pop up up here as a red flag client okay um that way you can keep track of what's happening all right so that's your clients let's look over at real quick your dashboard first. Um, so this is where, again, we don't have any sales and stuff in, so you're not going to see a whole lot here, but just so you see kind of the overall layout of this. So you've got some charts down here. You've got your revenue from specific things. So you can change this here. Primary services, add-ons, products, gift cards, packages, rent classes, and your tips. So you can see how that fluctuates from month to month or you can see this quarterly and it will change first quarter second quarter third quarter fourth quarter we don't have any um data in yet so it's not showing anything but that's how you'll be able to check and see what kind of fluctuations you see from month to month or from quarter to quarter and then your average client spend you're also going to see a monthly breakdown your revenue versus expenses broken down and then your rebooking rate month to month that way you can get a look at everything as we start to enter stuff these will all change so we'll check back here but i want you to see up here up top your distribution of revenue so again you can see based on those percentages you entered earlier this is going to um, basically add up your year to date how much did you have in business profit how much uh, was supposed to go for owner's compensation how much for taxes how much for operating expenses how much for savings so it keeps tabs of that um all together right there and then you can analyze all of these numbers your gross your expenses your net total service hours again this is why we mark the hours in that other tab so it can add all of that up um let's see yes julie how do we keep this hipaa compliant um it is just like in anything else that you have on your computer um it should be under um, password protection locked and guarded, turned off when anybody's around, that sort of stuff. Um, so just like any other software you would use, because um, we're not transferring data electronically, we're just having it here. On a, let me rephrase that. You're not transferring data electronically, you have it on a local file. So it needs to be locally protected, does that make sense? Um, all right, so you've got total tax collected, your rebooking rate will calculate so you know what percentage of your clients are rebooking new clients return clients total clients how much in total credit card fees you've collected other financing fees too excuse me if you have other fees associated with like venmo or whatever you can um, put those in again based on the rate that you put in the other tab and how much your average client spend was so what are people spending on average every time they come in Okay. Um, oh, and one thing to note here for my European uh, people, uh, this was a big request because it was very tedious to go in and change every little dollar sign um, for y'all. So you can just click this lovely little button over here and it will change the currency for you. You can change it to a dollar, you can change it to a euro, you can change it to a pound, whatever you would like. So that's all available right there too. Um, Let's see. So all the clients will be new clients at this point because none of this will transfer over from the old tracker. Correct. Nothing's going to transfer over from the old tracker. Um, however, if you know that client has been in before, then you want to um, go ahead. You can go ahead and mark them as return. If you would like to start fresh and say just this year alone, like if I treat everybody as new, what is my rebooking rate? Then you can do that. But if you know this person's been in before, especially recently, then go ahead and mark them as return. So you get a little bit more of an accurate look at that transfer from year to year. Does that make sense, Renee? Um, what if you have a loan through Square, where would you put that? As far as paying that back, you could mark that under a specific expense category. So um, let me go back to your update info. Um, in your expense categories here, you may put that as you know loan repayment. Um, 
or something like that. That way you can mark that separate as to your totals toward that. Awesome. Okay. Um, let me come back to dashboard. So we went over that and that and that. Awesome. Okay. And anything that you need me to stop at, please let me know. All right. So we got clients, we got that. So let's get into our monthly stuff. So you'll see here at the top, you've got your monthly sheets and you can pick. So we're just going to go into January. When you click it in the drop down, it's going to change here. You're still going to have to click it here to actually jump to that sheet. Okay. So you'll have to click it twice, just so you know. Um, all right. Now, this is where things really, really, really changed from last time. Um, so if you had the first one, you know, it was pretty much just sales and expenses. Um, and like all your sales was on one whole sheet, all your expenses was on one whole sheet, and it was just a lot um, in one section. So what we've done is kind of alter this. So you've got several different things for each month. So first you've got your calendar and you'll see there's a menu up top so you can jump from area to area. Next, you've got your sales section here. You've got your expenses here, a travel log, and a marketing plan every month has this exact same layout. So we'll go over each section, okay? So let's start with the calendar. Um, new look makes you giddy, I love this. Um, it makes me giddy too, because I've stared at this thing for so long and I'm so excited to finally show it to someone um, other than my mom. Sorry, mom. <laughs> I appreciate her insight, but yes, it is nice to show it to people who will actually use it. Um, okay, so here's a note. If you are going to use this for years and years to come, which I hope you will, um, you can change the year here and your dates will automatically change, by the way. Okay, so we're going to go back to 2023 so we can do that. But that way, you know, you can, you can change the year here. Um, now, none of the information that you put in here is going to change sorry, excuse me, in this part is going to change with that. But you can change the year. This is why you should save a master copy of this so that next year, all you have to do is change the year on each month and then you're set and it's all brand new and all ready to go. Um, okay, so let's look at this calendar first. So let's say today you can, I'm going to blow this up really big. You can take a look, um, you can keep track of your appointments here. Now this does not, just like anything else, this does not feed into any other system. It does not import anything in here. It does not export anything out into other systems. This is just a standalone, you get to look at this type calendar, okay? To keep track of your own appointments. So you can mark your time, let's say 9 a.m. You will pick from your client list. So I'm gonna put in a Candace Smith that I already put in, in my client list. And then I can pick my services. So again, you see how you've got that new one down there. If you change your prices, you would come down here for that, by the way. Um, I'm gonna put in that. I can put in an add-on, I can leave those blank. And you would just do this for any appointments that you have if you want to use this calendar to keep track of your appointments. Now this marketing section, you don't need to put anything in here. In fact, don't put anything because you'll see this big old formula up here that took me a long time to figure out um, is gonna do the work for you. I'll show you how that works in just a few minutes, but don't put anything in here for your marketing just yet. You're gonna put that in a different spot and it will automatically come over on this date. Um, okay, so that's basically how your calendar works, that's it. You can keep track of your appointments and then you've got some marketing stuff that will come over, um, which I'll show you in just a minute. So let's jump over to sales. By the way, you can also just scroll if you don't use those buttons, everything side by side. So, um, okay, let's do sales. So this is similar in the sense of you having a form here. So we're gonna put our form in, you can pick your client. You can also just type client's name in if you don't want to go through a big drop-down list. Um, if you have a whole lot of clients, you just have to make sure it matches because if it doesn't match what's in your client list, like capital letter and everything, it's not gonna pull it um, to count those visits. So we wanna pull from that list. I'm gonna say today and then my client type, we're gonna say she's a new client, and then I can pick my primary service. That's a 30 minute relaxation. And then I pick my payment type, again, what I put in that enter info portion, say she paid with cash, and has a, I don't even know, hot stone add-on, I think, yes. 
there we go. If it was a product, you could add a product here. So you've got up to three different sales types. So you add your sale type and then your actual description there. Say she bought a hand cream, okay? Now, let's say she gets $10 discount and she tips $15. Your total automatically calculates here. So don't mess with it. You hit submit and then you'll see that it pops down here in your tab or excuse me, in your table. And then what you're gonna see here is how all of this translates into all of these numbers, okay? So first you have your gross. So I left these in here for your goal setting. So if you want to set a goal each month and that way you can compare side by side. So the first of the month, set your goal. How much do you wanna gross? How much do you wanna net? Um, and then you can see your, your actual numbers side by side um, to keep track of that and how you're actually doing. Um, then you'll see primary, or excuse me, um, see results for, and this is something you can choose. Let's say I change to add-ons. So it's gonna show me how much I made in hot stones, how much I made in foot scrubs, how much I made for the sauna, whatever it is, okay? Um, I can see those results for very particular things. So again, the products, it's gonna change. So I can compare which products are selling the most which ones are not. Does that make sense? Um, you will also see your distribution of revenue. So it's basically taking this amount and it's splitting it up in those percentages that you already marked that you wanted it to split up. How much that month needs to go toward your operating expenses. How much that month needs to be set aside for taxes. How much needs to be set aside in savings. All of that calculates here. Then you have your sale types. Um, and this is the same kind of thing. So you're seeing basically how much revenue and how many of each you sold for your primary services, your add-ons, products versus gift cards versus packages versus rent versus classes. Um, so for some of you, you're going to have primary services and that's it. And none of this else, none of this other stuff matters. And that's fine. For some of you, you're going to be using every single one of these. So that's what we want. Um, let's see. Oh, thank you. Okay, um, and then this is the same kind of thing. Just another chart to kind of view this data a little differently. Um, so you can see how much you've spent, again, where your revenue is coming from um, between primary services, add-ons, all of that good fun stuff. Then you've got your rebooking rate is calculated here. We're zero because we have one client in, um, but it will calculate. You have your total client count, return clients, new clients, all of that's here. And again, you can set goals for each of these. That way you can compare side by side. You want to get 20 new clients this month. You set that as a goal. So you work toward it. And through the month, you can see how many total clients are you getting or how many new clients are you getting, excuse me, so that you can gauge what you need to do to improve that um, because it's right there in front of you. You've got total service hours. So again, when we put in our service hours and that enter info here tab, it calculates here based on how many things you've sold. Um, and again, that is variant and personal preference, whether you want that to be just hands-on or that's just client care in general. So it counts some of those hands-off hours. That is total personal preference on how you want to track that. Um, total sales tax collected. So you know how much you need to pay each month or quarter or however you decide to do that with your state um, and local government. Total credit card fees. And then here's a nice one. Um, so most popular... So most popular primary service, and it's going to tell me which service and how many I sold. What's the most popular add-on? Which one and how many? And then as compared to the most revenue, obviously I only have one in there, so it's going to be the same thing, but it's going to tell me which one was the most popular, which one gave me the most revenue, um, so that you can just click in real quick and add that instead of trying to analyze the other numbers over here or the charts. Just a different way to, again, to view the data. So that's it. Now, when this is done, um, actually, let me cover something really quick before we jump off of that. Um, let's say I add a gift card. I'm going to change this to a $50 gift card here. When I, I'm going to submit this just as another one. So you can see again, it follows, it comes down here into the chart. And if I go, back to my gift cards. You're gonna see that this automatically enters here in this gift card entry. 
so that all I need to do, oh, what just happened? Yep, that's supposed to go over there. Hold on. Let's go back over to January. Oh, no, nope, cards, that's where I need to be. Let's try that again. What is happening? Hold on. That should work just fine. Oh, there we go. Okay. Oh, no. I will check this. Give me a minute. Um, I'm not going to waste your time here on the live. Do you hit submit? And it comes down here on the table. Supposed to. I will fix this. Um, I might as well start. This was working like an hour ago. It's maybe the because of the version I have. Okay. Um, anyway, it will put it there. And then it's going to keep track of how many you issued, how many have sold, uh, excuse me, how much in gift cards you've issued, how many you've sold, um, how much is earned, how much is unearned. So in other words, do you perform those services yet? Because you're going to be able to put in when it's redeemed. Okay. All right. Let's go to packages, it's gonna do the same thing. If I was to put in packages on the sales tab, it's gonna automatically enter here, just like in the gift card tab. Don't worry, I will fix this. I'm not sure what's happening, but I'm gonna fix it. It may just be because again, I grabbed the older version and made a copy for the sample. Um, so that may be why I may have fixed that bug already. Thought I did. Okay, let's go back up to our monthly sheets here and get back to January. All right, and back over to our sales tab. Once you have those input, you will just clear. And then that will clear here. That will also clear it on the gift card and the packages tab as well. Okay, let's see here. That's everything for that. Um, I will go ahead and note, do not try to just enter stuff here in the, in the table. There's a lot of hidden columns in there who are, that are doing all kinds of magic behind the scenes. And if you're just inputting data directly into the table, it's not going to calculate correctly. Okay, so just don't put stuff directly in the table. Always use this form up here. Okay, let's go over to our expenses. And this is the exact same thing. You're going to put your expenses up top. So you're going to have the company. Well, maybe. Have the company. The category, oh, that's because we didn't fill those in. So you put the, let's say this is your landlord. And then you're going to have a category that is your, oops, that's not what I meant to click, rent. Um, our amount, say 600, due date of 1 1. We paid this from our general checking. I don't need to put a description in. And is it paid? Yes or no? Um, and there we go. And you'll see again, it'll pop down here. When it's yes, it'll be green. Let's say that I have another one in here that is, I don't know, client gifts. And we're doing ABC company and that's $20. Um, and we mark that as no. I can submit it. It will come down here. And then you're going to see our total expenses are $620, but I've only paid $600 so far. So I have $20 remaining. So if you want to input your expenses on a regular basis, or excuse me, um, like your standard expenses, you can do that. And that way it shows you what you paid for the month and what still needs to be out there. So you can compare that to your revenue and see how all that's playing out together. Okay. And then same thing, we're gonna clear that out and you'll see that all that data stays there. Okay. Let's go over to our travel logs. I want this to take forever for you guys. And if you are a mobile therapist or in any way travel for work, this is for you. If you are not, you do not have to worry about this. Um, let's see, can you do reoccurring expenses? It stays the same amount each month. I have not set it up for reoccurring expenses, I'm sorry. Um, that is something that I might be able to do later, but right now it is not reoccurring. Um, in this table though, let's see you would be able to, if you would input, unlike the, the sales thing, you could copy and paste this into the other tables. So let's say that you put in, you know, you have five or 10 expenses every month that are the exact same. 
you could go ahead and just put them all in one month, copy, and then paste them into each subsequent month. So you can go over to February and just paste them in here. Does that make sense? Um, so that would make it a little faster, but I do not have it currently set up for reoccurring. Um, okay. Go back to your travel log. So again, if you are mobile or if you travel at all, you will need to, to or you can use this. You put in your vehicle information just because usually you have to have that for reference um, for tax purposes. And these will automatically calculate for you your total fuel spend, your total, your total repair spend, and your total travel to be miles uh, traveled. Um, so you would put your date in, you will put your amount, so 20 gallons of gas, how much you paid for it hit submit and it will pop in down here. The exact same thing for any repairs and maintenance. You put in your date, the vendor that you're paying, the repair shop, whatever, the description, is it a brake job or you you know, get a new transmission, whatever. And then the cost, you submit it, it's gonna pop down here. And then you're gonna have your totals up here so that you can easily take those and then put them over into your expenses when you're ready um, at the end of the month. All right, so that is, your travel log if you need it, and then your marketing plan. This is the part um, a whole lot of people said they really, really wanted to have it involved. So this is what we've done. Um, it looks like a lot, but don't worry. It's actually pretty relatively simple here. Um, so again, you wanna set a marketing budget. So your goal versus your actual spend on marketing. And this is just gonna track everything that over in that expenses section, you mark as a marketing expense. Okay, um, let's see. So if you have some promotions you want to do, you will list these here, the name of that promotion, the purpose of it, is it to get clients? Is it to um, you know, educate the public? Is it to promote a workshop, whatever, um, and the goal. So is it you wanna get 20 new clients? Is it that you want to make a certain amount? Whatever it may be, um, put the specifics there. And the same thing if you had any ads, that you want to run, you're able to put this here and put which platform it's on, what your offer is, what the goal is for that ad, what your cost is for it. And then you can put your results in. How many people did you reach? What was your ROI, your return on investments money-wise? How much money did you make on it? Um, how many clients did you get off of it? And therefore, it will calculate what's your acquisition cost. How much did that ad, or excuse me, how much did you have to spend on that ad to get each client? Okay, so you'll get your acquisition cost there. Then for each of these, you have events, emails, networking, and then social media. You have one, two, and three different social media platforms, depending on you know, what you want to use. And you can absolutely change these and let it read Facebook or Instagram or whatever. Um, so in these, they're each a little bit different, but essentially you're going to put in the date up top. And then you're gonna just plan your marketing for that day. So you may only do one event a month. You may do 10 events per month. You've got those here, okay? Um, emails, again, you may send once a week. Others you may send on you know, a very regular basis. Same for networking, same for social media. You may be doing this every day, you may not. But you put your date here, you mark your name of, let's see, Girls Night Out, there's a whole thing here locally. See, there's usually 800 people there. So that's my exposure. It cost about $200. My contact, I'll say, is Jane Smith. And I could put a number in there. Okay. Um, that sort of thing. And then any notes, I, what I need to bring, you know, any special things I'm going to do, whatever. And then you've got some results, an area you can put results. How many new clients did I get that, at that event? Um, what kind of revenue was that? I had, let's see, $100 per client. So that gives me, I made $1,000 in actual ROI. So I had a 500% return on investment. This makes sense. It was $17 per client. Cost me to get them. Does this make sense? And what you'll see, because the same thing applies for all of these, your emails, same thing. You can mark your opens, your clicks, um, your call to action, which is book an appointment, read the newsletter, read the blog, whatever. Um, and ROI numbers can go here. Your networking, who you're wanting to talk to, 
how many clients you get from them, how many clients you send their way, all of that sort of stuff, and then your social media, your post types, the purpose of it, the theme, what your call to action is, um, any type of media you want with it, an image, a video, whatever, any text you're going to put with it, any notes that you need to have just for your own sake, and then your actual results. And you do that for each one of these. And what you're going to see when you've got this in here, as soon as you put a date in here, let's go up here to calendar. And you will see that automatically feeds into your marketing. So you will know I have this event today, or I need to put this email out today, or I need to post this to social media today. Whatever it is, once you plan it out in that marketing plan section, it automatically brings it over here to the associated dates so that you have it on your calendar. Okay. So let's see. I think that was everything in the marketing plan. Oh, nope, results. So your marketing plan results now, you've got all this up here for each one, your events, your emails, each one of your social medias. These kind of give you a little bit more insight. So again, if I had a dozen events, I'm able to look and see which one had the lowest acquisition cost, which one had the best ROI, which one had, or excuse me, what was my average acquisition cost? What was my average ROI? Total ROI, total new clients, total revenue, total spend. So I can, you know, analyze all of this. So once I get several events in there, I can see how much did I spend on events versus how much did I actually get um, in my ROI, that sort of stuff. How many clients did I actually get? You can analyze all of this a whole lot more. Same thing with your opens. You can see, you know, what emails are giving you the best results, what posts on social media are giving you the best results, your likes, your shares, how many clients are getting off of them, stuff like that. Um, so this is just a way to track your marketing a lot more effectively, okay? And you'll see that every single month, this is the same type of setup. Um, so you go to February, which I had scrolled through before, March, April, May. It's the exact same type of setup. Everything, your calendar changes with it. All your stuff is kept locally in that month, okay? And then your profit and loss statement. Um, kind of the last thing we'll go over here. And this is something you can do monthly, quarterly, or annual. So if I do monthly and I wanna look at just January, I can see my breakdown of revenue by again, primary service, add-on products, gift cards. And this also has tips in here so that you can see how much was for what. Um, and then your expenses broken down by those categories that you listed before, okay? So it shows if you have a net profit or a net loss. And that's it. And you can change this again if you at the end of the year and you want to change to that, we'll change it to a complete annual. And then there you go. Obviously we don't have a whole lot of data in here so it's staying the same, but you'll see those change and adjust to add in the other months as well. So that's pretty much it. Um, I'm trying to think if there was anything else I was missing but I don't think so. I think that is everything. Oh, so here you can see that how the charts will present. Again, once you start putting in data, you'll start getting more and more in here. So that is the whole shebang. Um, if you've got questions, let me know. I will hang out here for just a minute. Um, if you have any questions, if, do you need anything? If there's something extra you want me to show you, let me know. Um, I'll hang out here for just a minute. But other than that, um, that's it. So I will get this video ready. It's kind of an instructional video to go um, to be ready for y'all. It will probably be an hour or two before it's all processed and uploaded and all that fun stuff. But I will get that out and ready um, da -da 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 -da, probably in the next couple hours. And then it will be available um, in the on the website too, um, with both on the sales page and for those of you who've already purchased like the old version and you've already got this new version that's already in your files. I put it in there earlier today. Um, it's ready to go. So this um, instructional video will be in there as well if you didn't catch it all. So it can walk you through all that stuff. But if you have questions, please let me know. Um, will this flow into Google Sheets? That was the other thing. Okay, yes, Google Sheets, um, this will not transfer. You're not gonna be able to just take this and transfer it into Google Sheets and have it work. I will have the Google Sheets version. It was supposed to be 
ready today. I will have it ready hopefully within the next few weeks, um, if not, or not a few weeks, sorry, a few days. I'm going to give myself a week um, not to drag you into like behind the scenes business drama, but y'all know how that is. Um, I got royally screwed over by a contractor who was supposed to deliver the Google Sheet version of this and didn't and then ghosted me. And it's been a hellacious weekend um, to try to get anything from them. And now I have nothing from them. So I have to go and learn Google Sheets so that I can make this work um, because it's just different coding. There's a lot of coding in this Excel file and I'm gonna have to learn how to code it for Google. Um, so I will do that and it will be ready. I'm going to say, give me a week just in case I struggle with it. I'm hoping I can have it done in a couple days. Um, but I don't want to promise that and then not be able to be able to deliver. So give me a week, but I will announce as soon as the Google Sheets version is ready. Um, let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. I had a couple questions. How do you delete an expense if you make a mistake? You can go in and just highlight that whole row off the table and delete it. Um, so, let's go back to January. If you come in here and yeah, I didn't mean to put this in here, just highlight it and delete and it's fine. Not gonna mess anything up. Um, you are welcome, thank you. Let's see, distribution of revenue, awesome. I do like that. Um, can I add more services even if 35 isn't enough? Um, I know you cannot add to that tab or to the, let me go back here. Um, in here, it, hold on. Some things would work, but some things would not. I'm trying to think of how all the back end stuff works or how it's all situated. Um, if you were to just like add a line here and try to add more services. Instead, split it up between, if you're not using one of these other things, then use that for your additional services and just say that's your services number two list, um, something like that, because it's just not going to, it's not going to function correctly if you try to go and add more lines beyond that 35. Um, so split it up between your primary services, your add-ons, your products, your gift cards, your packages, your ranch classes. And if you're not using one or two or any of these other ones, feel free to add more services on those lists and just label them as something different. So that will work just fine. Um, let's see, any other questions, anything that you guys wanted to know about? I'm going to stop sharing for now. Um, let's see if there was anything else I had. Make sure. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. I think. Do, 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 do. Everything should be in there and we're good to go. So let me know if you have any other questions. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up. Um, and then like I said, it is already available on the website. I am gonna double check. I'm pretty sure I just grabbed the wrong version before I fixed that bug, but I'm gonna double check my bug that I found while we were doing this um, and get that corrected. Um, if it's If it is in that file, I don't think it is, but I'm gonna double check. Um, but let me know if you have any questions, anything else that I can possibly help with. Um, and I hope you guys like this. It's been a labor of love and tears and <laughs> lots of things. So um, anyway, I will talk to you all soon. Thanks guys.